in our game. Brand right. new game. Florida State gets it first. Searching for their 10th win of the year. The Atlantic Coast Conference champions for the 11th time in 12 years in the ACC. Let's go back to our uh, quarterback comparison. Ricks has still only thrown the ball nine times, but has been very efficient when throwing it. And Leak uh, having a big day. Reaction on the fake to Washington. Now Washington, the, the receiver, and hit out of bounds by Crowder after a gain of about six yards. Nice check down by Chris Ricks that time. He was trying to throw a corner route up the field. It was covered. He dumped it out to the secondary receiver. Left-hand side. There's a corner route being run at the top of your screen. Doesn't see it. Throws it outside. Positive yardage. Second and five for Ricks and the Seminoles. Washington up the middle. He was hit by Reed Fleming near the line of scrimmage. Washington driving forward to the 45-yard line, a couple of yards short of a first down. And they spot the ball at the 46. A bit fancy just out of the eye formation. Florida State has been using those three tailbacks all afternoon long. Washington, Booker, Jones. To grind it out against the Gators on a cold November night. Third down as Florida State just one for seven on third down conversions in this game. Washington hit behind the line, trying to drive forward, but five or six blue shirts push him back. And I don't know if his forward progress was enough. It will not be. Florida State early here in the fourth quarter will have a decision to make. Great play at the point of attack by Reed Fleming filling nicely. Nice job by Reed Fleming going hitting him up high and driving him back. Was not going down low where he falls forward, hits him high, drives him back, gets some help from his teammates, stopping him short of the first down. And the decision is made on the Florida State sideline. They will punt the football on fourth down and inches. Jesse Stein will punt. Yuan Rattler stands deep at the 15. And the punter Stein goes down and the flag is dropped. The fair catch is made at the 10-yard line. And Stein pumping his fist. He did a nice job to draw the penalty. There was not much contact from Bobby McCray. We'll get another look in a moment. This is a simple five-yard variety. McCray was doing everything he could to get out of the way. And, and he's actually pushed into the kicker. If you look at the left side of your screen, you'll see Bobby McCray's pushed into Stein, and he gets called for the penalty. Tough break for the senior from Homestead, Florida. If you look up to the top of your Running screen. Running into the kicker by the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. The yardage is up to the first down. So a break uh, again for Florida State as the uh, Gators McCray runs into Stein. Well, I got to give Stein a lot of credit there. He, he went down like somebody hit him with a howitzer. Well, that's his job. You know, he, he's he's part kicker, part actor. And, you know, that's what you train your kickers to do. Any pressure, you go down and hope you get the ball. Ball at the 49-yard line in Florida territory. And it's Booker. Not much yardage that time. That's the third first down today for the Seminoles off of uh, Gator penalties. Well, those kind of mistakes in a close game, a big rivalry like this can cost you the game. Anytime you get into a, a games of this nature, mistakes usually will dictate particularly uh, who, who gets and or keeps momentum. Booker once again in the backfield. Play action as Ricks looks to throw. He finds Booker, and what a tackle in the open field by Gus Scott. He just came flying through there like a helicopter. He went came back in there real quick, and Booker had no chance to make a play. 
Well, once he saw the release of the football, he's sitting back in the zone, reading the coverage. He sees the release of the football. Now watch the break on the football. Great open field tacker, tackle as Booker tries to avoid the tackle, and he gets down around the legs. And that is a big time play right there. Well, Gus Scott, third down and 11. Robinson comes wide to the right. P.K. Sam to the left for Florida State. And Lorenzo Booker on the fake toss. Rips looking to throw it deep for P.K. Sam. And it is overthrown at the five-yard line. Good coverage by Daryl Dixon. He was not fooled on the play fake. And Florida State will punt the ball again. Florida's defense does a great job of reacting to that uh, penalty, having to come back on in Florida State's offense three and out. A nice job by Daryl Dixon of finding the receiver, get, locating the football, and making sure that if he can't catch the receiver, don't have an opportunity to catch it. Stein gets it away again. Ratliff calls for the fair catch and makes it inside the 10 at the seven yard line. So uh, the Gators uh, once again will have it deep in their territory after a 42 yard punt, a beautiful punt by Jesse Stein. Florida backed up inside its 10 with 11.25 to play in a tie game with the Seminoles. 24-24. Sunshine Network, the home of the Orlando Magic. Tune in Tuesday as T-Mac and the Magic face off against Baron Davis and the New Orleans Hornets. Coverage begins at 6.30 with Bob Dance, Suzuki Magic tonight, and hopefully the nightmare will end. That would be the 15-game losing streak I'm referring to, guys. Uh, we, we were thinking the same thing down there in Miami, watching the heat. <laughs> well, a great punt by Jesse Stein has Florida backed up inside its 10-yard line. Well, Stein has made, uh, made a habit of that this year. He's done a terrific job running the ball for Florida State. Now the, the Gators with Chris Leak at quarterback. Leak looking to throw. He's got Ben Troop. Troop at the 35 with the 40. And Carter is there to drive him down at the 47-yard line. Well, this guy has some amazing speed for a man his size, doesn't he? Well, Ben Troop has amazing speed, but the confidence that Ed Zahnbrecher has in Chris Leak backed up inside your own 10-yard line to go play action and throw the football. And a perfectly thrown football to Ben Troop for 39 yards. Well, he outran the, the linebacker, Ray Picune. Here's Caldwell making a man miss, stepping over the midfield straight to the 47-yard line of Florida State. That's game for about six yards. And, then, and from the inception of the play, really didn't look like much. Good blocking out front. Nice job of avoiding the tackle, getting back into the play by... Caldwell picking up six yards. Nice block out there by Carlos Perez, too. Allowing Caldwell the time to turn his shoulders back upfield and get positive yardage. They set up the screen to Faison. And Seatric Faison has the Florida first down. Goes head to head with a Seminole defender at the 35-yard line. And the Gators are deep in Florida State territory now with 10-16 to go, a 13-yard play. Hey, guys, what do you do when you have a speedy defense? You use a lot of misdirection, a lot of little trick stuff. You get them running one way, you screen it back the other way, and then get the ball into your running back hands that does the most with it, which has been theatric face on of late, and he picks up another Gator first down. Old books, he draws and screens. Big rolling left, shovels it forward. Carthage to the 19 of Florida State. Alan Augustin made a nice play. That was a, a misdirection and had a lot of folks scratching their head on that Florida State side of the field. Well, we've seen Chris Lee run the option and then we see him run the shovel pass back inside after stretching the defense to Rand Carthage for another Gator first down. Everybody gets excited about that play, Matt, but if it doesn't go anywhere, if the receiver doesn't catch it, it's a forward pass incomplete. With the handoff to the fullback, Carthon running hard inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. 
Well, Florida's offense has a lot of momentum right now. Ed Zondrecker seems to have things in a nice rhythm. You know, I, I just heard Keith talk about that shovel pass, the nice thing for the running back, or it's a, if it falls to the ground, being the next running back, that's not the nice thing because sometimes if the defense is not full, the running back gets punished. Yeah. Steps up right there in the line. just setting you up for that. <laughs> Timeout Florida State with 9.50 to play, and Mickey Andrews calls the troops over for a little regrouping. Florida marching it down the field and sitting at the FSU 11-yard line. Second down and four when we come back. Early in the fourth quarter, but Florida is knocking on the door at the Florida State 11. Season tickets for 2003-2004 FSU men's and women's basketball now on sale. And to order your tickets for this action-packed season, call one of the numbers on your screen or simply go online at Seminoles.com. On this drive, Chris Lee has completed four out of four passes for 64 yards. This will be the sixth play on this drive, which, remember, started back at the seven-yard line. The first play, the long pass completion to tight end Ben Troop. Seminoles digging in. They bring four on the rush. Leak is rolling out, now getting pressure and throwing it deep for the end zone, and he throws it away. And that's, that's the maturity of Chris Leak, where early in the year he was taking the sacks, he was not getting outside the pocket. He realized that once he gets outside the tackles, he can throw the ball away as long as it goes up past the line of scrimmage. Nice job by the young man. And a third down play coming. The first down marker is at the eight. Leak having a big, big day in his first uh, opportunity to go against the Florida State Seminoles. Leak rifles it for the end zone. Incomplete. Dropped by Troop. That was a sure six and an uncharacteristic drop by the big fella. And how, and how many times can Florida State not cover number 84? Beautiful route ran by Ben Troop. Perfectly thrown football just off his fingertips. And I think he might have saw a blur of number 23, Carter. Jerome Carter, out of the corner of his eye and uh, lost concentration on the football. Well, it'll be a 29-yard field goal attempt by Leach. He was already hit from 47 twice and from 42. He missed one from 48. Well, there's contact on the line, and that might go against Florida State for being offside. Unless there was uh, an offensive player on the Gators who drew him, which is always uh, a possibility. The officials are talking about it. Florida State pointing at uh, the, the men in blue, and Florida thinks it's going to go the other way. This would be a big penalty. Dead ball foul, offside by contact on the defense. The five-yard penalty results in the first down. And mistakes creep up again, this time on Florida State. There you see A.J. Nicholson. A.J. Nicholson as well as uh, Dockett. Both jumped offside. But Darnell just didn't make contact where A.J. did. Well, only five penalties per team, but there have been some costly ones on both sides. And so the Gators have first down and goal at the Florida State 7. And Carthon, the tailback, gets the handoff and gets hit by Womble at the line of scrimmage. That is just a great play by the senior. Out of Dunwoody, Georgia. Wommel doesn't get that many tackles for loss because he's usually double teamed, but he has a great job that time of getting down low, not letting the offensive lineman get to his legs. He gets off the ball, the block quickly, and moves upfield. That is a loss of a yard. So it's second and goal from the eighth. And when you're trying to throw the football, a loss of a yard gives you a few more yards to throw the football to run patterns in the back of the end zone. 
He will throw. He looks for Small and overshoots him in the corner of the end zone. Now it'll be third down. The goal from the eighth. Florida trying to take the lead with 8.47 to play. And offensive coordinator Ed Zombrecher attempting to uh, signal in a play that will get them six points. They've already had a chance for a field goal, but a Florida State penalty gave them first and goal inside the 10-yard line. This is a big play, Dan. A big play. It's third and goal from the FSU 8. Leak shovels it forward. This time the Seminoles are not fooled. What an excellent play by Kendall Pope. Another one of those experienced Florida State linebackers. He uh, just uh, was not going to be fooled on that shovel pass again. Man. And one of the things that happens, if you're a senior, you've seen this before, you got burned, you're not going to get burned again. And there you see Kendall Pope staying at home, waiting for the ball to be pitched, making the play. Fool me once. You've done good. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Now this will be a 28-yard attempt. The one a moment ago was going to be for 29, so the Gators picked up one yard. And Matt Leach's kick is good. Right through the uprights. Florida takes uh, the lead 27-24, but a moral victory, if nothing else, for the Florida State defense as they keep the Gators out of the end zone with a lot of time left in the football game. Leach has hit four field goals today. In the fourth period, Florida State's defense uh, stopping the Gators, though Florida had a first and goal at the seven and was unable to put the ball into the end zone. And Mickey Andrews took a timeout to talk with his troops, and they did a terrific job. Let's go to the field and Steve Bavick. Well, David, a trademark of Florida State's defense in the red zone. Very stingy when it comes to giving up touchdowns. Only 29% this year have they given up touchdowns. And conversely, the Gator offense in the red zone scoring six, only 50%. So FSU did pretty well in that stand right there. But, Steve, uh, the, the Gators have been seven touchdowns in their last ten attempts in the red zone coming into today's game. So that's a great effort by Florida State's defense. And the Gators had a chance to get a touchdown before that penalty that gave them first and goal at the seven. And this is a perfectly thrown football that Ben Troop just not able to hang on to that uh, forces the Gators to sell for field goals. And we all know that if you continue to get down there and you keep coming out with field goals, eventually it gets you beat. Well, that's the best kick by Matt Petrovich tonight as he keeps it away from Leon Washington. And sails it through the end zone. A little uh, pushing uh, and shoving going on up uh, around midfield, but no flags are thrown. And job well done by Matt Petrovich. One of Florida State's greatest weapons today has been Washington on the return. Florida State has enjoyed great field position off of kickoff returns. This time they'll start from their own 20. All right, here comes the junior, Chris Ricks. Washington will be his tailback. The number's on Ricks today, and he has not thrown an interception, but he did fumble once, which was a costly mistake. Picked up and returned to 77 yards for a touchdown by Kawan Ratliff. Ricks throws a bullet. Robinson with the catch. Dominic Robinson has played a solid game today. He's made a couple of big catches. This one for 14 yards. He's not uh, going to replace Crow Thorpe, but he's played awfully well. Florida State is going to have to throw the ball a little better over the middle. That time, a little curl route. It's been open, and, and Florida State's not taking advantage of it. Well, Matt Farrier just continually to get lost on defense whenever they go to a zone defense. You know, you, you're expected for your linebacker to be there in the slot and force the quarterback to have to throw around you, and Matt Farrier just didn't get there. All right, let's go to the sideline and check in with Tom Block. Go to proper notification. David, there's a lot of talk about how much of the game does Bobby Bowden really coach. Well, prior to that drive, he was on the headsets, told Jeff Bowden, let's work the middle of the field, throw the square ends. Got 14 yards on the first one. We'll see what Florida does now. Right, he's got uh, Sam uh, split wide to the right. Bobby Bowden looking on for the sideline. Dominic Robinson is split wide to the left. Play 
option fake to Washington. Sam with the catch. Another Florida State first down at the Florida 47-yard line. P.K. Sam, a junior from Buford, Georgia. And uh, he's a guy that has come on uh, really strong of late. Had 10 catches early in the year against Colorado. Had five big catches against NC State. Once again, you see the linebacker doesn't get a good drop. They, they bite the play action fake. Channing Crowder gets sucked up as well as Reed Fleming. Big hole in the middle of the field. I guess when daddy speaks, son does listen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a good thing. Florida State moving it now back to back first down. There was a lot of movement on the line and the flag is thrown. Robinson, an outstanding catch at the 36 yard line and then steps out of bounds. But we'll check the flag. Well, normally if that's procedure, they'll stop the play. If they let it continue, it's normally defensive offsides. By the defense, that penalty is refused. First down. That's exactly the case. Florida State picking up the first down at the Florida 36-yard line. And Chris Ricks throwing the ball around, uh, zipping it in there. Two passes to Robinson, one to Sam. And Seminoles have moved it from their 20-yard line all the way to the Florida 36 in short order. up in the eye again. The Gators rush four. Ricks oh. over the middle. Man is wide open. It's Booker coming out of the backfield all the way down. No, it's not Booker. It's uh, the Donnie Carter. Carter. Carter coming out and catching the ball at the two-yard line. The Seminoles are first and goal. We've seen Florida State go to their tight end twice now. Once on the right-hand side, Matt Henshaw with the touchdown reception. This time, Donnie Carter, nothing fancy, just finding the middle of the field his fifth reception in 12 ball games. Wow. And the Gators come out in a, in a two deep zone. Not one linebacker got a drop, and it was just another easy pitching catch for the quarterback of the tight end. Leon Washington hurdling over the ball, top. Ball. Ball came out. Let's see who got it. Well, a Florida player has come out of there. Crowder with the football, but. Well, Crowder's going to get, not that it's going to matter because it'll be half the distance, but. He spiked the ball and it's up around yeah, the 50 yard line. Halfway to Niceville. Ron Zooks uh, talking with uh, the young fellow right now, telling him to calm down. Well, you know, it's easy for us to sit up here and say that, but when the ball's bouncing around time after time again, and the officials are the making bad calls. Recovered by the fumbler, making it second down. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike penalty against the defense. Half the distance to the goal, second down. Every Jack Childress seems a little bit upset with uh, the guys in the blue uniforms. Let's take a look, see if we can see exactly what happened here yeah. as the ball comes oh, out. My. my goodness. And usually, <laughs> no, gee whiz, that, I'll tell you what, yeah, but that's you're... very presumptuous. But remember, Nat, if both players have the ball, it goes to the offense. Since when? I that's never got rule. it that way. That's the rule. Gee whiz. That's the rule. <laughs> Usually, whoever is the strongest at the bottom of the pile gets the fumble recovery. And that time, Channing Crowder came up with it. Well, the penalty puts the ball inside the two. And Chris Ricks under center will keep it and get very little. But let's see if he got enough. No touchdown signal. If they unstack them. The defense uh, really charged up down there, upset with what they perceive to be a, a, a bad whistle today against their arch rival. Well, guys, I mean, at a certain point, you know, it's hard not to say that these guys have blown so many calls, especially a call of this magnitude down, going in where you give the ball back to Florida State, even though a Florida player comes out with the football and understand what you're saying but they're both underneath fighting for the ball and no one really has control of it but if they blow it dead 
Here's and, another look at it. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. Here with the comes call. the ball out, and let's see who has the football. He doesn't have the football right there. Blue has the ball right, right there. There, guys. <laughs> no, I think right there's the ball. Right you know, there's the ball. Well, they've given it to Florida State. And then he roots it out after the play. Okay. <laughs> well, easy, boys. Let's get along now. Don't tackle me. We'll be back in a minute with 5.50 to go in Florida State threatening. Uh. It'll be Leon Washington uh, in the tailback position. You see Florida State's numbers in the red zone. Four opportunities. And a touchdown and a field goal today. But, but guys, I, I have a question to ask. You know, if on the play where Washington tried to go up and over, the ball comes out, you call a penalty half the distance to the goal. Isn't that an automatic first down? Not on a, not on a sportsman. That's just tacked on. I, I thought it would have been too. <laughs> I was surprised. Well, I hope you're right. Then they, they finally got a call right tonight. I, I think. <laughs> Now maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> which would be consistent with every other call that's been made by anybody today. Oh, man. That football resting inside the one. Crowder trying to get his teammates fired up for this third down and goal play. Fullback is Coleman. Washington, the tailback. Ricks, the quarterback. Hand off to Washington. Hit behind the line, but he scoops near the goal line but still no signal and uh, apparently he did not get in the end zone so it brings up fourth down for Florida State and Chris Ricks looking toward the sideline and looking uh, for the field goal team or a play let's get another look and here's another look good good to action down inside good call by the official from that angle Look like he's down right there, and then he reaches the ball across. But he's not down. He's on, laying on top of the defender. I don't think he got in. He got in for the touchdown. Chris Ricks, the quarterback sneak for the score. A fourth down and inches, and Ricks pushes it in. Well, and everybody's starting to do that little thing now, Nat, where the quarterback will take the ball and jump it over because even if you knock it out of his hands, as long as he breaks the plane, he gets credited with the score. And, and everybody's trying to get down and under to get penetration, so it's a lot easier just reach the ball across and uh, get the touchdown. Yeah, no question about that one. Ricks clearly got the ball across the plane. I think the uh, extra point is good. And Florida State takes the 31 to 27 lead with 5:01 left in the fourth quarter. Well, expect a wild finish. Anything might happen from now on. And order your tickets. You guys, as we start to look at the clock, you got to think about the timeout situation where the Gators spun couple timeouts in the third quarter and so has Florida State here already in the second half so both teams are only have one timeout left as we go down the final minutes of the ball game. 501 uh, ample time though to drive the football down the field plenty of time even with just one timeout here's the pooch kick up short and it will be fumbled by a Florida up man but then recovered uh, that is Skyler Thornton the backup tailback and the Gators get good field position, but they need a touchdown to take the lead with 4.54 left. Very, very fortunate that Skylar Thornton, once he muffs this football, it bounces right back up to him, and he's able to catch it and pick it up and get up field. But, you know, you want a fair catch that football. Don't take any chances at that, that point. You already got great field position. You know, I can't remember a game where there were so many fumbles that were controversial, whether they were fumbles, whether they were recovered by one team, whether they should have been a fumble or not a fumble. Can you guys remember so many plays like that in one game? Luke Puck fakes and throwing deep for Carlos Perez over fires at the 25-yard line. Now, I, I, I've not seen that myself, David. And, you know, you, you, you hate for the game to be taken away on either side by the officials 
but that's part of the game. You know, they make mistakes the same as everybody else. Chris Leak uh, tried to get the ball down the field. Carlos Perez on an out and up had him open, but just slightly overthrown. Now second and ten, Florida operating from its 40-yard line, trailing 31 to 27. Leak steps up in the pocket. He'll run it this time. He got a block from O.J. Small and got a first down for the FSU 49. Well, it's spotting down around the 47. 14-yard run for the freshman quarterback, Samuels. The primary tackler there. Florida lines up, 436 left. They still have one timeout remaining. And off to Rand Carthon. Steps over a defender to the 40 and then taken down at the 38-yard line by B.J. Ward. You know, Rand Carthon just does such a great job of tucking in behind the big tackle on the pull. He runs that play of the three backs. He runs it better than all of them. Maybe it's because he doesn't have as much speed, so it's easier for him to change direction and get back in the hole. Uh, it, it's difficult. Every running back has their favorite type of running play, and that one just suits him. I thought should have been hit and stopped behind the line of scrimmage, but somehow got away from Darnell Dockett. Managed to get uh, across the 40 of uh, 37 down to around the 36 yard line. And that's good for first down. Good second effort by Rand Carthon. Of course, you notice that uh, Florida going with their senior running back. Experience hanging on to the football. Well, it's crunch time, and that's what you want to do. Put the ball in the hands of a guy that you You've got a lot of confidence in that won't make a mistake. Won't put the ball on the ground. Carthon again the ball carrier. Taken down by Alan Augustin. Augustin rather at the 33-yard line. I tell you, Augustin and uh, and Pope and Bullware have played sound football again today for Florida State. OJ Small looking for a block on the corner. Out of bounds at the 28-yard line. It'll be two yards short of a first down. It'll be third down coming up for the Gators. Well, O.J. Small had an opportunity to maybe split him and get the first down, but he tried to bounce it outside instead of taking on the contact. You know, you've got to know what you need for the first down. Turn it up, go north and south. The defense of this caliber wants you to run east and west. Big play here. The Gators need to take the ball inside the 26 to get the first and 10. And Leak will keep it and be hit behind the line of scrimmage and stop well short of the first down. Well, number 27, an excellent job, Claudius Ose, with the hit behind the line of scrimmage. Florida will probably consider taking their last time out because this is going to end up being fourth down as you see the tail end of the play there. There well, is a player down. Great play by Ose. And, and, and guys, you know, what we, we sometimes we start to look at the ball game, we forget about the X's and O's by the coaches. That time, Mickey Andrews actually had Ose coming on a blitz. If, if he's back where he's supposed to be, you've got the right play on, you pick up the first down. But because they're bringing him on a delayed blitz where he's coming before the quarterback comes out. Now watch number 27. Left hand side, he's Left hand side, he's coming on a blitz, so he's in perfect position to make the play. Good call by Mickey Andrews. And then Kendall Pope comes up to make sure that Leak cannot uh, drive forward for the first down. Mickey Andrews, longtime uh, defensive coordinator for the Seminoles. Malone is down. Now he's limping down for, the, for Florida. A key guy on that offensive line. Not a starter, but uh, a guy that gets a lot of snaps. And I do mean man. 6'7, 310. Lowell was lined up on the right side, giving Randy Hand a breather. All right, so the Gators now with the ball at the 28. They will go for the first down on fourth down and two. Remember, they need about the 26-yard line. Trailing by four with 3.06 to go in the fourth period. comes the blitz. Leak rolling left. Leak looking for the marker. Hit by Pope. And they mark him at the 26 and a half. It's going to be very close. <laughs> oh. 
It depends upon the spot, and I mean, we are on the, right on top of it here in the press box. Well, here's and another look at close. it, and let's see exactly where he goes out, because it looked to me as if he got to the 25-yard line. I can't tell from those angles. But in any event, they spotted it at the 26 and a half, and here come the chains from the opposite side of the field, and a very important measurement coming up. I don't want to be a guy in a striped shirt if this is short. Because wherever they live, they may not get there. Well, the crowd is already restless. But it is a first down for the Gators. Well, the Gators get the first down. But, guys, I know I've got old eyes. I've got four eyes on them. It was not that close. <laughs> Oh boy, are you taking your heart medicine? Hey, hey, I, I, you know what? What did I start this opening with? I had my blue and orange on. <laughs> he had his aqua, I mean, excuse me, maroon and gold, crimson and gold. So no matter what you say, our hearts are in it. All right, the Gators uh, with the first down are at the 25 and a half yard line. Big throwing it over the top for Ben Troop. Touchdown! And that was a very close play. Let's get another look at this one. Another perfectly thrown football by Chris Leak as he leads Ben Troop into the back of the end zone. He just did get that right foot down right here for the touchdown. I tell you, the back judge was this close to waving it incomplete. The extra point by Matt Leach is good, and the Gators go up by a field goal with an eternity left in this football game. Well, David, if he had ruled that one incomplete, he was in the wrong end of the end zone. Well, what a Beautifully catch. thrown football and a good catch by Big Ben Troop to put the Gators ahead. But, guys, there's two minutes and 50 seconds to go in this ball game, and uh, the Gators have not been able to stop the Seminoles here of late. And, and if you're Nicky Andrews and and his staff, you've got to be wondering how many times do you have to tell your kids when the big play time comes, when you're playing Florida, when you're playing Miami, or when you're playing Virginia, they're going to look to the tight end. They did have proper coverage on. Jerome Carter was matched up with Truth, but I don't know what you could do there. That I'm was, not sure you could was, do anything. That was an incredible throw by the freshman quarterback. The best thing uh, that, that, that you could say is they let Troop get off the line of scrimmage without a bump. Yeah. You know, you probably want to consider putting somebody over the top of him if for no other reason Matt, to slow him up. You're right. You see a football on Sunday, Matt. You don't see it done any better on Sundays by Leak and Troop right there. Well, there's no question about that. But, you know, when you've got a player, you've got to know who that big play guy is. If, if, if Fort had not gotten hurt, you would say playing Florida State, the game's on the line, you know that Fort's going to get the ball. Playing Florida, game's on the line, you know they want to get the ball to Troop. So you cannot allow him to get behind the defense. You've got to keep everything in front of you, come up and make the tackle. What a football game. Man, 2.50 left in the fourth quarter. Florida kicking off to Florida State. And again, watch uh, for the return as uh, Washington standing back. And there's Sabathia uh, hoping to get a chance to send this game into overtime if uh, Chris Ricks and company can't take it in for a touchdown. It is Washington from a couple of yards deep. Leon Washington hit at the 25 and taken down at the 27-yard line. 28-yard return. And that's where Florida State will take the football. And, and the problem that Florida has now, they have to defend the whole field, but even a field goal will tie the ball game. So Chris Ricks, with this Seminole offense, need to pick up four or five first downs to get into field goal range. They need to get at least to about the 30-yard line for Bayfield. Right now, they're at their own 28. Florida State, Chris Ricks, Lorenzo Booker, the tailback. 
And it's Booker getting the handoff. Booker taking it to the outside. Tripped up by Dixon as he crosses the 30-yard line. About a five-yard gain by Lorenzo Booker. Good open field tackle by Daryl Dixon as Booker tried to spin on him. Daryl Dixon, leading tackler for the Gators this year at, from his free safety slot. Florida State taking an awful lot of time to get the play in. They have one timeout remaining. That was a gain of four by Booker. This time the backs are split. Booker and Coleman out of the shotgun. Ricks fumbles it, and down he goes at the 24-yard line. Well, we haven't seen much shotgun offense, uh, Keith, and that might be why. Looked like he just took his eyes off the football there. Now trying to look downfield a little too much. Yeah, right, there. right there. He's looking right dead at us and not at the football. Now a huge play for the Seminoles. Third down and 14 from the 24. Ricks looking, throwing over the middle of the field for Sam, incomplete. Well, he had a step on the defender. Ricks threw it a couple of yards too long. And it's fourth down for Florida State with 123 left. They need 14 yards for a first down, and they might have to go for it here. Well, the Gators dodge a bullet as Rick fakes out to the right, and then Sam gets behind the defense and just flat misses him. He pump fakes out to the left, and then he misses P.K. Sam down the middle of the field as he gets behind Gus Scott, running wide open for a potential touchdown. All right, so Florida State with one timeout left. 123 on the clock. They'll have to go for it on fourth and 14. Greg Jones is now in the backfield. Three-man rush by the Gators. Wicks' pass is caught by Robinson. He keeps the drive alive at the 48-yard line. Time will stop as they move the chains, but Florida State will again have to hurry up. And, David, my question is to the Gators, why are they playing a zone defense? Because they don't get the drops. They don't get deep enough. It's plenty of time for the quarterback to throw the football. You want to force him into making a mistake. If you give Chris Ricks time, he's a pretty accurate passer. Good catch by the man replacing Thorpe, who's had a nice day. Ricks rolling, looking to throw deep. Fires it deep for Sam again. And it is caught for a touchdown. Two yards on the pass from Ricks to Sam. And this is what happens when you allow Chris Ricks time to throw the football. He's got plenty of time. He steps up, perfectly throw football. Great adjustment by Sam's as Gus Scott's not able to get it out. That is a great adjustment, and we've talked about it all during the ball game. Chris Ricks is feast or famine. He makes a great play. He makes a poor play. He makes a great play. The extra point by Bathia is good. And Florida State has taken the lead 38-34 with 55 seconds left in a remarkable football game. You know, I, I go back two guys to Florida State two weeks ago in that double overtime contest with North Carolina State. You got to believe that hopefully the kids are knowing that, you know, it's never over. Anything can happen. And, and if you're Florida, you still got 55 seconds and one timeout as well. But at, at a point like this where you are beat, if you're Gus Scott, you've got to get the interference period. You cannot allow him the opportunity to catch the football. You make the play, you, you, you take the 15-yard penalty, you line up and play another down. You cannot allow the receiver to catch the football. And you know, the senior is probably thinking just that, among other things, right now. What a throw, though, by Chris Ricks and uh, P.K. Sam with the biggest catch of his career. And uh, perhaps the biggest touchdown pass in the career of Chris Ricks. You know who's back home probably not able to contain himself is Crafonzo Thorpe. Yeah. In Tallahassee, unable to make the trip, the doctors would not let him.
Would not allow him to travel. And here of uh, the guy stepping up, Robinson made a nice catch the previous play to get the first down. And then Sam with the touchdown reception from Chris Ricks to give the Seminoles a 38-34 advantage. Florida has one timeout left when they get the ball back. Well, guys, Gus Scott has been such a, a warrior, such a trooper. You know, guys caused the fumble earlier today with a script that Kiwan Rattle was able to pick up and run in. I mean, he's been such a great player. You sure would hate for his career to end with everybody thinking about the play that was just made by P.K. Sand. You know, It'll be a tough way to go out. One of the 22 seniors playing their final game at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium today, Gus Scott. They feel set to kick it off. But, but write it down, gang. It ain't quite over yet. No question about that. This uh, game has been too wild to make any of those types of assumptions. Andre Caldwell. Bringing it out to the 20. Bouncing it outside to the 30. A nice return by the freshman. He's out of bounds at the 31-yard line. He uses seven seconds of the clock. And now 48 ticks of the clock left. Here in Gainesville. And a great block by Seatric Faison to spring him for an additional 10, 12 yards as he bounced it outside. The only redeeming thing we can say about the officiating that is I don't recall there being any blocking fouls on kickoff returns, kick returns, <laughs> punt returns. Florida lines up with Chris Leak, who's had an incredible afternoon and evening. Working out of the shotgun. Leak's pass is intended for Kite to hit someone on the helmet. I think it might have hit Rufus Brown on the right on the, the head and popped up into the air. I think Rufus jumped underneath that out route real quick. Yeah. It could have very been nearly been pass interference as well. Hit him right on top of the helmet. Ricocheted out of bounds, so it's second down. Ball at the 31-yard line. Somebody please cover the tight end. Leak pump fakes, now steps up. He's going to have to run it. And down he goes at the 37-yard line with the clock ticking. And Florida going to have to use its final timeout. Well, he would like to get the ball to Kelvin Kite on the outside. Kelvin Kite is running a little out and up. And he gets behind Rufus Brown. But uh, Chris Leak's forced to scramble, not able to get the ball to him. By that time, Leak has, had already made up his mind and was headed up the field. So, the Gators use their final timeout. What a... Here's it. I'm Florida State, Mickey Andrews. I'm watching 84. Well, a big play guy for the Gators this year in crucial situations has been Carlos Perez. We haven't seen much from Carlos here tonight. Opportune time for Carlos to step up. He's down at the bottom of your screen on third down and four. No timeouts remaining now for the Gators. And the pass is caught by Caldwell to pick up the first down and stop the clock momentarily. 26 seconds to go. Gators hustle up to the line of scrimmage. They're near midfield. The officials set to put it in play. The clock starts. And Luke will try and throw the football. Luke scrambling and will get out of bounds at the 50 with 17 seconds left in the game. Well, just a moment ago, Chris Ricks completed a 52-yard pass into the end zone to P.K. Sam, and now Chris Leak is going to try and do the same thing. But the difference in what we're seeing right now is they're dropping eight, rushing three, they're getting everybody back, deep drops, keeping everything in front of them. When you go play a soft zone, you got to keep everything in front of you, get everybody looking at the quarterback. And the reason for that is a four-point differential, not a three-point. Florida has to score a touchdown. And Luke firing it for Kelvin Kite, but he overshoots everybody with ten, now nine seconds left in the game. It'll be third down at midfield. And, and what are the problems that happens when you use your timeouts or waste your timeouts early in the ball game it forces you to have to throw the ball outside because if you throw the ball down the middle of the field the clock runs out so the gators wasting a couple of timeouts in the third quarter now is coming back to haunt them 
They had to use their last timeout a moment ago after Leak uh, scrambled to avoid getting sacked and could not find a receiver. Well, here we go. It's third down and seven from the 50. Leak scrambling out of pressure. Throwing it on the run. Down the sideline. It's incomplete. And now with one second left in the game, the Gators will have one final opportunity to try and pull uh, a victory here against Bobby Bowden Seminoles, who, uh, well, you got to give them credit. They have battled back several times after the Gators took the lead in the second half. And Florida State now will use its final timeout to make sure well, they've got things lined up defensively. Well, they're doing that as well, but also they're doing that so everybody gets a quick breather and they don't get in a bad position because of fatigue. Well, the play of the game is brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers, and there's not much, much question about what the play of the game is, is there? Not pretty, not the way you draw it up. Just two players connecting. Could have gone either way, but Sam makes a great adjustment to move back to his left. College football on Sunshine Network has been brought to you in part by. And uh, the Gators have to throw the ball into the end zone and hope a uh, Hail Mary connects. Line that lines up three that, men to the right. Has ESPN been running all those uh, last minute votes for the greatest <laughs> last second play? Hopefully this won't be added to it. Rick. Luke uh, looking to throw, he spins away. He's going to run the football. He's got to take it all the way or this game is over. And the Seminoles surround him and bring him down at the 18-yard line, sealing the victory in the swamp. Florida State fortunate, guys. Every Both teams, it was kind of like he who had the ball last would win. Chris Ricks. Took them 80 yards on one drive, a long 59-yard touchdown pass on another, and Florida State wins by four. Two, two well-played, uh, two teams that played the game exceptionally well. No one gave up. They kept all playing, and uh, at the end, just ran out of time, and looked like we're, their tempers have started to flare out on the football field. That's just uncalled for. Get in the dugout, or get in the locker room, guys. Just turn and walk away. Just turn and walk away. This is something that you you hate to see after a great ball game like this where both teams played their heart out. It's getting ugly, and uh, the folks are having a hard time trying to separate some of the players down in midfield. So a hard-fought football game, and they're still fighting, even after the game is over. But uh, Chris Leak got involved uh, as he congratulates Ernie Sims and the Florida State Seminoles. Bobby Bowden gets his 10th win of the year for the 18th time in his career. He's won 10 or more. So a big victory for Florida State. They win it 38 to 34 in a wild contest here in the swamp. Thanks to our great Sunshine Network crew. I'm David Steele for Keith Jones and Nat Moore. Thanks for watching everyone here on Sunshine Network.